We can create some amazing photos these days on small sensor devices like action cameras and mobile phones. The downside of these things is that the sensor size is so small when we're doing things in low light, it almost always results in digital noise. In this video, we're gonna talk about digital noise, what causes it, what you can do about it, and how to fix it. Let's get into it. G'day guys, Shane Mostyn here. Welcome to another 5 Minute Friday. If it's your first time here, make sure you subscribe. I do two videos every week. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button so you're notified each and every time I release a video. If you're new here, check out the description below and you'll see all the links to everything that we're talking about here today in this video. So digital noise, what is it? It's that visual representation of grain over like you see on old film photos like this. But these days what it really is is a signal to noise ratio that's digitally enhanced through your device that you're looking at. The signal is the light that's coming into the sensor. The noise is the processing of the AI in the device that you're using. So the less light coming into the device, as in the signal, the less signal coming into the device, the more that device has to process that light to make it brighter, resulting in noise. So when you're shooting on a nice bright day, you don't get that much noise when you're shooting low light, like astrophotography, like what we do on this channel, you almost always get a lot of digital noise. The same goes for when you're shooting action photography, so sports photography, that sort of thing. The shutter is open for thousandths of a second, really, really fast shutter speed. So then there's less time for light to come in and hit that sensor, almost always resulting in a little bit of noise. So what causes digital noise? Well, there's a few things that cause it. One is high ISO. So the more sensitive that the sensor is to light. So when it's low light situation, you need it to be more sensitive so it gathers more light into the sensor. That's one reason. The second reason is the size of the sensor. So imagine that you've got, uh, say, a Canon 5D Mark III with a nice fast lens on it, nice big sensor size on that. And big sensor size means it gathers more light easier. Opposite end of that is our phone. Our phone, the size of a thumbnail, its tiny little sensor needs to, say, funnel out and gather more light. So if you think about a big piece of cardboard and we put it outside in the rain, say it's a meter by a meter, and this represents, say, a full sensor camera, the raindrops hitting that, we'll call that noise. Over the course of that great big piece of cardboard, there's a few drops all over it. Say we've got a small piece of cardboard the size of your thumbnail, put it out there as well, but then we put a, thumb, uh, put a funnel over the top of it, the same size as that piece of cardboard, it gathers up all that noise and it pushes it down onto that small little sensor, creating lots of noise. So the bigger the sensor, the less it's impacted by noise generally. The smaller the sensor, the more it's impacted by noise. The good news for us in the mobile photography space is that the AI that's in mobile phones these days, in many mobile phones, like the iPhone 11 Pro, the iPhone 12, certainly a lot of Android devices, especially the Pixel 4, it does really well in low light and the, in the uh, computational photography element of that tends to reduce the noise a fair amount anyway, but we're always left with some of it. The technology isn't quite there yet to get rid of it. So what can we do about it and how do we get rid of this digital noise? For years and years and years, my go-to solution for noise is the luminance slider in Adobe Lightroom on the desktop computer. For me, it just makes sense. I do professional photography all the time, so it makes sense that I pay this uh, Creative Cloud subscription of $18 a month or something like that it is, so that all of my clients, I just can process this uh, nice and quickly through this program. Um, we'll have a look at that here now. We'll have a look at this photo I took of um, this photography group that I teach here in my hometown. We go out at night, we do some astrophotography. On this night, we took, a photo, took some photos of this old tractor and um, with the Milky Way out behind it there, I'll zoom in here and we'll have a look at this photo. Look at the noise that's in that photo. It is significant and this is from a full frame Canon camera with a nice fast lens on it. It's just that it's a higher ISO to capture that Milky Way. Look at the noise in there, it's incredible. I'll go down to that luminance slider down here and slide it and you can see what happens, the noise goes away. If you take it too far though, with astrophotography, you start losing the stars. So it's a bit of a, a trade-off, if you like, between the two. Uh, you have a little bit of noise, lots of stars, less stars, no noise. That's the trade-off that you have. 
What do you do for mobile photography though? Well, there's a few apps that you've got for mobile photography with editing, obviously, I do them on this channel. But Lightroom is also available on mobile devices. You can get like a Lightroom light, if you like, without subscribing to the Creative Cloud. It'll do things like, or you'll miss out on things like the synchronization of the photos across the platform, uh, and you do miss out on some tools. So you can certainly go ahead and pay for the um, subscription, and you will have that luminance slider there. But you all know, if you're a subscriber to this channel, you know that I absolutely love Snapseed. Now, when I look at the, my mobile device, I've got two apps on there primarily for editing photos. One is Snapseed, the other is Lightroom. Why do I keep both on there? Well, there's two tools that I use a fair bit in Lightroom that Snapseed just doesn't have. One of those is the luminance slider, and the other one is the dehazing tool. It's really good for landscape photography as well as portrait photography. So I keep that, those both apps on my phone for that reason. But what if we could find at least one of them in Snapseed? We go through Snapseed and we start looking for a luminance slider and that sucker, it's MIA. It is nowhere to be seen at all. But I found it. Let's have a look. So the luminance slider in Snapseed isn't called luminance. It's not even where you think it would be. Go into the tools, then go up to details and you've got sharpness and you've got structure there. I've always considered these two things to be basically sharpening tools. Only one is though, the sharpening tool. The other one, the structure tool, that's a noise slider. I had no idea. Did you know that? Let me know. Anyway, let's bring that photo in that we've just used before. It's a raw photo file. So yeah, Snapseed does do raw photo editing. We'll bring it into Snapseed and you can see there, you can do some base editing on the raw file, on the actual file before you start editing the photo. So we can change things like uh, temperature and things like that. So let's go into and edit this photo, go up to the details tab, let's move that slider. I'll tell you what, it does a pretty bloody good job. In Snapseed though, you've got to weigh up the two parts of that tool, the structure part and the sharpening part. And it's a trade off between the two as to how sharp you want to make the photo and how much noise you're willing to accept in that photo. And that's personal up to you how you want to do that. You can have a little bit of noise and loosen detail or a little bit more noise and keep some detail. That's for you as an artist, photographer, how much you want to keep in there. So the more I use Snapseed, the more I'm finding this sucker's a really powerful tool. That's how good the uh, noise reduction is in Snapseed. Don't forget, head over to phonephotoschool.com.au, head down the bottom, make sure you subscribe to the newsletter there. What you're going to receive for doing that is two things. You're going to receive a free ebook. It's going to be emailed to you. That'll give you six ways to get more creative with your mobile photography, as well as it'll take you automatically to another page where we get presets with Snapseed. Yeah, you can, presets with Snapseed. I'm going to give you three free to use right now. So head over there, sign up for the newsletter, and I'll see you guys next week. Catch you later.